My favorite database is PlanetScale and my favorite ORM is Drizzle. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to get those up and running in a brand new project from scratch. If you enjoy it, make sure you like and subscribe. And otherwise, let's just, let's just do it. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and create our app. So I'm just gonna run PNPM create Svelte at latest. And then we're just gonna say um, live demo and then for the settings in here, I'm using Svelte as my example here. Uh, it's my meta framework of choice. If you guys prefer next or whatever, this will all mostly carry over. Uh, so we're gonna say, I just want a skeleton project. I want to use TypeScript. Uh, we're gonna use ESLint and Prettier, and I'm gonna use the Svelte 5 preview. Doesn't really matter. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do code live demo. I know my desktop is a mess right now. That'll You'll know why it is very soon here. Um, we're gonna go ahead here. We're gonna open up a brand new terminal. I will zoom in because we're recording a video uh, and I get yelled at about that a lot. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead in here. We're gonna do PNPMI. And now, now we're gonna go ahead and do PNPM run dev. We have our SvelteKit app working locally. So now that we've created our SvelteKit app, we need to go ahead and create our database. We're using Planet Scale here. I'll talk about the why behind that in another video, but in this video, we're just gonna do the how. So over here, we're gonna go ahead, create a new database. I'm just gonna name this Live Video DB. We're gonna go ahead and set the region to be Ohio, because I'm in Ohio. Uh, I'm just going to make this a free database uh, because this is just for a tutorial. If you guys don't already have a plan to scale database on your account, you can get one database for free. Uh, otherwise, you, if you want multiple on your account, you have to pay for them. Uh, so here we're going to go ahead and use the one free and then um, I don't need metrics on this and I'm going to go ahead and create it. So as this is creating, it's going to go ahead and pop up this menu to give us some connection strings. I'm going to say we want drizzle uh, down here in the password. I'm just going to generate this password. Um, I'm not going to blur this out because this password will be deleted by the time this goes live. So don't even worry about it. Um, and it actually just gives us a lot of the pieces we need right in here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to go ahead and do, uh, we're going to copy this and we are going to go back over to our, um, Svelte app and we're going to do PNPM add. We're going to do drizzle ORM and plan and scale database. Then we're going to go back over here. And we're going to also add .env. We will need this for our drizzle config. So we're going to do pnpm add .env. And now they're going to give us access to the .env file we need. We're actually going to need to get one other thing from this, but we can do that later. Uh, so I'm going to go over here to .env and then I'm going to paste in this guy. And now we are going to go back over to here and we are going to grab all this information or at least part of it. And then we're going to add this to our SvelteKit app. So I'm gonna take all of this stuff. We don't need .env.config because we're gonna be doing it a little bit differently since this is in um, SvelteKit. So I'm gonna create a new file called db.ts. I'm gonna paste all this stuff in. And then instead of doing process uh, process.env.database host, we are gonna go ahead and do env. And we're gonna get this from dynamic slash private because we do not want these environment variables accessed from the client. So we'll do all this stuff right here. And then we're going to do export const db. Uh, we'll add in our schema in a second here. That'll be more of this too. So now that we've got this, we have our database connection. We can connect to it on our front end. Everything is good. We're going to go to our database overview. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually say connect. And I'm going to go ahead and actually, no, we're not going to do that. Now that we've got all that set up, I'm actually going to make a couple changes. So by default, that's just going to allow us to add stuff in and connect it to the main branch and do everything there. But if you're not familiar with Planet Scale, Planet Scale does has something called database branching, and I want to utilize that here. I think it is a much better way to handle migrations and dealing with your database to sort of treat it like a Git repository. I'll talk about that in the Planet Scale video pretty soon here, but for today, I'm just going to show you how it works. So we're going to go ahead in here and we're going to hit new branch. When I hit new branch, we're going to call this dev. In real life, I'd probably have a staging branch in between main and dev, uh, but for now, we're just going to do dev. And this, the base branch is going to be main. So this dev, think of it like an offshoot of main. If you're familiar with Git at all, it's very similar to how a staging or development branch would be an offshoot of your main branch. So we're gonna go ahead and say this, we're gonna create our branch. It's gonna take a second to initialize. And then once this is initialized, I'm actually gonna switch out all of my connection strings within the code itself to now match this. So now that our database branch has initialized, we're gonna go ahead and connect to this. I'm gonna create a password for this. We'll call it this. Again, this will also be deleted, so who really cares? 
I'm gonna go down here and since we're using drizzle, I need to grab these three pieces here. I'm gonna go to my .env again. We're going to replace all of these. Now I'm going to go over here to, um, what's it called? Uh, I'm also going to want to grab a database connection string for our Drizzle Studio and for push migrations. So we're going to go down here to, uh, where's our boy? Uh, we're going to go down here to Node.js and we're going to grab this guy right here. We're going to grab this connection string and we're going to paste him in here. So now we have a database URL, username and password and host. These three will be used by the PlanetScale server, serverless driver to actually connect to our database in the application. This database URL is going to be used within our uh, Drizzle files and stuff to manage uh, pushing to the database and migrating and also Drizzle Studio. So we've done all that stuff here. We can close this up. We don't need that anymore. Uh, if we refresh the schema, there's not going to be anything in here. So let's put something in there. I want to go ahead and get the schema set up. So we're going to go ahead in here and we're going to go within our lib directory. We're going to add a schema.ts. This is not the greatest like file for file layout type stuff. You could put this in like a DB directory or something, but you know, for the purposes of this, it really doesn't matter. So what we're going to do in here is now we just need to create our tables. So I'm going to do export const. Um, let's call this. What do we want to use as an example? Let's do contacts. So we'll do export const contact equals my SQL table. Then if we hit this, uh, will it auto? No, it won't get it. That's sad. So we had the MySQL import from MySQL core. We're going to go ahead and name this table contact. If you're not familiar with Drizzle at all, uh, the left side name, so the actual variable name, is the reference that we can use within our code base to access this table. Then the name we pass in over here is what it will actually be named in the underlying schema. So if we wanted to go ahead and connect to this database in like a Golang application or just directly via raw SQL, the table name would just be contact or whatever we put in here. I could call this contact 23. It'd be contact 23. So now that we've named the table contact, let's add our fields. So let's go ahead and say first... Uh, first name, I can't type, is going to be a uh, varchar. We're going to add that import from here. Uh, we're going to say a varchar of first name. I like doing a snake case for my um, variable names within my database, and I prefer camel case within my application. Just kind of how I do things. You can do it however you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say our length of this guy is going to be, uh, let's give him a length of like, you know, a hundred or whatever. I don't know. Again, not the biggest thing in the world. We're going to say that that is not going to be null. We're now going to do last name var char last name. We're going to say our length is going to be 100 dot not null. And then we're last going to add an email var char email. Uh, we're going to set our length to be, um, let's give this one a longer length. Let's say length is 255. And we're going to make this our primary key um, just for this case, because we don't want any duplicate emails. So there we go. We have a very basic uh, table in here. Uh, this is not a drizzle tutorial, so we're not going to talk about relations, uh, just how to get this set up. So we've got our schema in here. I'm going to go back over to my um, I'm going to go back over to my db.ts file. I'm going to add something over here. I'm going to go ahead and add schema in here. And then up at the top here, we're going to do import star as schema from dot slash schema. So that way now within our drizzle, um, our actual drizzle instance, we can do um, db dot query dot contact and we can get this nice Prisma like syntax, which is really, really helpful for, uh, when doing stuff, especially uh, it's really helpful, especially when dealing with relations. So now that our database is fully set up and our schema is ready, we need to actually migrate to our database because we're using a SQL database. We need to migrate um, or at least push our schema in somehow. So the way we're going to do that is going to be using the built-in tools of Drizzle Kit. I am going to copy paste directly from the e-commerce site I've been working on this drizzle.config.ts file. So within this file here, the whole reason why we installed .env is so that we can use environment variables within our uh, Drizzle config file over here. Uh, I'm going to rename this to database uh, URL. I had it set to that uh, a different name within my other project. I don't really know why. Um, we need to install Drizzle Kit. So we're going to go ahead and do pnpm add d Drizzle Kit. And now that this is installed, we can go ahead and do. Um, and now we need to go ahead and also change our schema path because I had it within a DB directory. Here I just have it right in lib, so we're just going to do lib slash schema. 
and uh, our driver is MySQL2. That's the reason why we needed to grab that database URL over here. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and push to our schema. I also went ahead and grabbed two really useful custom commands that I added to the e-commerce site and I add to pretty much all of my projects for my database. DB push is just the drizzle kit command to push our database, whatever our current schema is, to our current database. So in this case, we're gonna be pushing our schema to the dev branch we created. And then DB Studio is a really useful thing for just dealing with and messing with our data during development. Oftentimes you'll also have a seed function in here. Uh, we're not gonna have that in this little example, but it is something you can often, uh, but it is something that's in the e-commerce site. So if you wanna see that, go check it out there. Uh, so now that we have these commands, we're gonna go ahead and do pnpm run db push. Once we run db push, all of our changes will be applied, assuming everything went correct. So now that our database has been migrated, we can go ahead and actually use this. So I'm gonna go ahead over here, and let's actually consume this within our application. We're not gonna get too crazy with this. I'm gonna go into my roots. I'm gonna add a page.server.ts. Uh, this is not useful like application code, but it's just going to be an example of how this can kind of work in real life and how we can actually use this in a full stack app. So within my load function, since we don't have any data within our contacts right now, this will be kind of lame, but we'll just do const contacts equals await db, and we'll import that from libdb dot query dot contact dot find many. So we're just going to grab all the contacts in the database. We're going to return these. Uh, All right, great. So now that we have this basic load function, we're gonna go into our page.svelte. I'm just gonna go ahead up here. I'm gonna do a script tag. We're going to go ahead and say lang equals ts. We're gonna say export, or uh, not export let data because we're using Svelte 5 here. So what we wanna say is we wanna say const uh, data equals dollar props. So we're gonna grab the data from our props and then we're just gonna do an effect and we're just gonna say uh, anytime this changes, we want to just do console.log data. We're not going to use this within the application, but now that we've done this, we can go ahead and say pnpm run dev. So as expected, when we open up our application, we're going to see this like proxy object. That's actually just because I was console.logging data. Instead, we want to do console.log data.contacts. So we're going to hit that, and now our array is just going to be nice and empty. So now let's go ahead and actually get this. Uh, let's put some data in here to show how this works. So we're gonna go ahead and use DB Studio to actually add some data in here for testing purposes. But the first thing we need to do is we need to actually add the MySQL package to connect directly to that database. So we're gonna do pnpm add dash D MySQL2. And now we're gonna go ahead and do pnpm run DB Studio. And then now that we've done this, we can open up local.drizzle.studio and this will pull up our tables. We have one table of contact. Let's go ahead and add some contacts in here. Let's do Ben, Davis, whoops. Then let's just do test at gmail.com. We're gonna save this one change, and then we're gonna go back to our application over here. We're gonna do pnpm run dev. And now we can go ahead in here. We can open this up. If we inspect element, we look at our console and we look at our array. We can see right here, we have one entry inside of it. We have test at gmail.com and all this information I just entered. So that's it. That's how I get my databases set up and working. I guess the last thing I'll show you guys is how we actually migrate this to the production branch because this is the branch that I would use in development, but I would not use this database that we're currently screwing with in production. The way I would do that is I'd go over, I'd go back over to here. I go to my overview. We're gonna go ahead and enable safe migrations onto our production branch, which is main. And then we're gonna go back over to our branches tab. We're gonna to go to dev. We're gonna go down here to uh, create deploy request. Um, we're just gonna say init. We're gonna go ahead and create a deploy request. Uh, we don't need any comments here. It's gonna check and make sure if it works. Since there's nothing in main, it will definitely work. So you'll see right here, the only change we have in this deploy request is that we're creating a new table called contact. I'm gonna hit deploy. It'll go ahead and queue it. It takes a second here, but then all of these changes will be deployed to our production branch. And we can use those initial credentials that we got at the very start of the video to connect to the database and use it in production. So that's my database setup. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, the biggest thing that I think that you will probably run into is make sure that your database connection string, your database URL, you grab the one that ends with reject unauthorized true, or you're gonna get an SSL error. 
Otherwise, everything should work very smoothly, and I will host all of this code in the description so that you can copy it, uh, use it as a starting point for your apps, and uh, yeah, if you enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon.